Let's go back to the discussion of the person can follow the Quran clearly and categorically for an alim. And that's what many people do. They follow the goal of the alim as an understanding. But the delil is what they're following. So in other words, Malik gives a delil for this issue. Malik gives a delil. Yeah. And for example, the uh, khisa of Ibn Abi Dhib and Malik, the hadith Al-Bayyani Abil Khiyari. Malik claimed that hadith is mansukh. When we looked at it, it's not mansukh. So who's right here? Someone's right. Why can't they both be right? Why, why can't Al-Naqidhani la yajtami'an? Two opposites can't come together. When can. it, we have the sunnah for that. Two opposites. Yes. So, what do you know what mansukh uh, uh, is? <laughs> yeah, abrogated. Okay. Abrogated shows ma'amul ma ghayr ma'amul. Yeah. Acting upon it and can't be acted upon it. Okay, so the Prophet said when he sent the companions in the Battle of Akhzab. No, just this one. How can we take both opinions? One is saying that hadith is abrogated, mm. hadith is gone. We can't act upon it. Another one saying, no, the hadith is muhkam. It's not abrogated. We can act upon it. They're two opposites. How can you bring their two views together? With the example of the Prophet ﷺ sending the companions on the Battle of Ahzab, when he said, do not pray Salat al-Asr until you reach your destination. Ah. And the companions were on the journey mm. and Salat al-Asr time was coming in. Ah. And some of them thought, oh, I think we should pray now. But there's one, there now. was one view that was right. No, because they went back to the Prophet and he said, you're both right. The Prophet ﷺ, and when they both came back to him, yes. he did not scold any one of them. Yes. He didn't tell them any, any one of them wrong. Okay. Both of them left with the rewards. One got two and one got right one. But which one was right? The one that was right was the one who prayed the salah when he came in. According the to salah who? is a legislation from Allah. But did the Prophet some say that at the time you were wrong and you were right? Did no, he say that? That we so we got, let's slowly let's take this step. Go on. Let's take this point slowly. There's something called ijtihad. Okay. Meaning, which the scholars when they look at it, all of the adilla are يعني, pull and push. It's not clear. Mm. I mean, there are misail which are ijtihadiyah. No one can like belittle the other person for holding it. For example, when we go down in the salah, do we put our knees down or our hands first? For example, it's a misail ijtihadiyah. Ijtihad means both parties have solid evidences. The concept is how do we understand this? Mm. And the evidences are qabila, open for this and this. Mm. Niqab is it wajib. It's open for this and that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there are many issues like that we, we see people discussing back and forth. Fine. It's open for all parties. Okay. People make a big hoo ha about it, but it's really open for both parties. Yeah. The hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, that none of you should pray except in Banu Quraida. Hmm. And he said them alayhi salatu salam. That hadith, the truth is only one. Don't ever think to yourself the truth can be two or three or four. It can't be truth. Both parties are now sitting down to understand. From this hadith, what the Prophet meant. Yeah. A group of the, them stuck to the word. Okay. And a group of them took a mafhum from it, which is that the Prophet, when he said, don't pray, except in Banu Quraydah, he meant hasten. Get there fast. Make sure Asr reaches you in Banu Quraydah. Okay. So it was isti'jal, he was haste. Yani, the Prophet can't delay salah. He's not a musharrih, he's not a legislator, alayhi salatu salam. Allah is the one who. In the salat kanat ala al mu'minina kitaban mawquta sallallahu alayhi wa So the salat time is section, it's sit. Hmm. When the Prophet said that he meant get there fast. Okay. That party is correct. The party who understood it as to mean, you know, um, the Prophet told us not to pray even if the salat time comes in until we get to Banu Quraidah, their understanding was incorrect. But that being said, they got to that conclusion based on their ijtihad. Okay. And I already told you the Prophet said إذا إذا حكم الحاكم فجتهد فأصاب فله أجران وإذا حكم الحاكم فأخطى فله أجر واحد. Okay, let's break it down. The issue of praying salah on time is that a مسألة that is اجتهادية. Which one do you mean? Praying the salah on time. That's clear cut. There is no dispute on that. You have to pray salah on time. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. So that's not an اجتهادية issue. Okay. It becomes an ijtihadi issue because they have a statement from the Prophet وسلم, which are trying to implement at the same time, Correct. these companions at the time. Correct. That's my point with all of these madahib that you say, this one's wrong and this one's right and this one's right. They've all got delil on their side. No. They do. No, so not all of it. So that's their right. statement of the Prophet is a delil, right? They, yeah, but they, there are issues. There are issues which are ijtihadi amongst the madahib. So you're right. I'm not going to deny that. Okay. There are issues which are ijtihadi. Masail which are ijtihadiyah. Yes. No, I'm not denying it. Okay. And 
it's it's how you look at it to be honest yeah but this i still hold an opinion and i'm willing to have a discussion with the other person okay. but when i get up from that discussion with that brother who's a hanafi for example and he believes that and he's doing ijtihad yeah and he's the ijtihad of his madhab is on this and my ijtihad on this issue is this we get up and there's no hatred or animosity between us because it's a masala ijtihadi mahda like there are issues which are haq and batil even if your imam said it but, yeah. sh- but sh- okay some issues are okay. haq they're khilafiyya but they're ijtihadiyya okay i see they this they there's, there's, there's a there's difference is, but it's not valid there's difference. a right or wrong okay there's a what there's a right or wrong one is right and one is one is wrong the issue of the wali for example the guardian of the woman we say abu hanifa akhta is wrong mm. and he, he's going to leave with the reward he's going to leave with the reward and the prophet said anyone who follows him after the evidence comes to him he's a sinner when, did he, did when he, a source is read to you yeah and the views يعني, the adilla is read on you you can't still stick to al imam abu hanifa rahimahullah it's not permissible for you now because you have no source Click from the Quran and the Sunnah, in which it says to you here, here you can't say, uh, our madhab believes this, our view is this, this is what ta- this is the ta'asub. And Abu about. Hanifa never had any Quran and Sunnah on his side? There's... I'm not saying he didn't. He did it, right? On this I, issue. I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you, is that what your statement is going to allude to is that Imam Abu Hanifa, every single situation, this is their argument, and it's, this is what it implies Go that he can't do a mistake. That's what you're implying now. No, By but, saying, Al Imam, you're telling me this hadith Al Imam Abu Hanifa didn't know? Yeah, that my, what I'm implying is that the madhab, the Imams of the madhab. I just said to you, the, Imam the, Abu Hanifa may he's not memorized all the hadiths. Neither has Imam Shafi or Ahmed. But or they Malik. brought out a hadith that, or they brought out a delil that Al Imam Abu Hanifa didn't. What if he knew about that delil, but he didn't accept it as a delil? Maybe it's a weak hadith to him. His own student, they said, Al Qadi Abu Yusuf. Yeah. They said in some of the words, he disagreed with him in all of the views that Imam Abu Hanifa held, except a handful of. I don't know the number. Okay. He's a student. Yeah. Muhammad Hassan Shaiban, when he debated with Imam Shafi'i, and he came to the conclusion of some issues and he t- repented from it, or he took back some views, he said, Wallahi, if my sahib, yani Imam Shafi'i, Abu Hanifa, was alive, Wallahi, he would have take, taken the opinion the way I took it. I'm taking it now. Mm. My, it just comes back to my scholar said this, your scholar said that. Like, no, it's not. I'm it's, saying to you, the default position that many people are getting wrong is that they're looking at the scholar as though. He's infallible from the big get go. It's the in implication. Are you open minded to accept that Al Imam Abu Hanifa and Malik and Shafi and Ahmed can all do mistakes? First of all, do you accept okay. that? Okay. No, yes or no? Okay. Uh, I have to explain it. I have to explain the answer. No, I, for this simple is a question. It's a simple okay. question. Is Al Imam Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi, and Ahmed, are they infallible? We agree at the start that they're not infallible, so they are open to mistakes. We agree that at the start. Okay. Okay. So you're saying that let's, Imam... let's let's go through the process. So okay. So they're not if they're not they can do mistakes. They can do mistakes. Okay. So can by the way, the scholars Ibn uh, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh Al Albani, Sheikh uh, everyone, yeah, all can. Of them. everyone. Everybody can. can. Okay, Jimmy. Now it brings us to the argument. Then. Okay. We don't get offensive over the people anymore. Agreed. Now we... let's get to the argument. Okay. Second point, I come to you with this. Okay. Now that you've accepted that all of these ulama, yuqadu min qawlihi wa yurad, his statement can either be taken or Rejected. Rejected. Alhamdulillah. Let's look at the arguments now. Okay. Who are you to say that this argument is wrong? No, I'm not going to. Uh, who, who is Ibn Taymiyyah? Who, who's, who? No, forget Ibn Taymiyyah. We're going to look at the four imams themselves. Okay. Well, are you happy with the four imams yeah, themselves? Yeah, let's ah, do that. Okay. Take the issue of Imam Abu Hanifa, where he came to the issue of the uh, uh, woman marrying herself off. Okay. Imam Abu Hanifa said, if a woman goes to a shop, and she buys and she sells, would that tra- transaction be accepted? I'm asking you a question. Repeat the question. A, ma- a woman goes and she goes to a shop. Yeah. She's buying and she's selling something. Yeah. She's got a watch. She's got something she wants to sell. Can she do it? What did Abu Hanifa say? I don't know what no, he I'm said. I'm asking you. Yes, yeah, she can. Abu Hanifa said she can. Okay. She can. Yeah, which we, of course, a woman can buy and sell whenever okay. she wants. There's nothing wrong with that. Abu Hanifa said, if he, she can sell and she can buy things, why can't she give herself out? Okay. Okay. Does so he's made Qiyas. He's in, he's which is qiyas. valid from Ijma' Quran, Sunnah, Ijma' Qiyas. Right. Okay, beautiful, right? Okay, it's, it's valid. He's it's a, valid. He's got a Qiyas here. Beautiful. Okay, carry on. Okay, put that aside for me. Okay. We have the scholars here, on the other hand, bringing the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَيُّمَا مَرَأَةٍ نَكَحَتْ بِغَيْرِ إِذْنِ وَلِيَّهَا فَنِكَحُهَا بَاطِنُ فَنِكَحُهَا بَاطِنُ فَنِكَحُهَا بَاطِنُ what if he says that hadith is weak? No, let me, I'm, step by step, we're going okay, to go, go back and forth 
to the, each discussion. We're going to go back and forth. Who from now, at this point, before we go into the authentication, or we're going to come to that, who at this moment is right? As okay. we're discussing the issue. Okay, my question is... No, stop. stop. We are just, uh, just, I'm, uh, I'm asking you a question. I'm not answering the question. Can they both be right? No, they can't. Okay. J I want to... No, I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Abu Hanifa used Qiyas. Yes. These scholars have used a hadith. You haven't looked into the gradient. You're going to now going to change your... But at this moment... Yeah. Who's right? I can't say because if I look into the grade and I say this is a weak hadith. No, you're going to change. We're going to change again. We're going to say Abu Hanifa came back and he responded. But well, let's you can't leave hadith unrestricted. No, I, look, I'm saying to you, one person used a hadith and another person used a what? Yeah, Qiyas. Qiyas. Yeah. The hadith could be fabricated. We... We're going to come to it as a second phase. <laughs> I'm, I want us to come to it. I want to step okay. by step. Okay. The scholars, they say, this is what I'm trying to say to you. The scholars, they say, there's no ijtihad when there's a nas. Okay. Abu Hanifa, Barakallahu fi you gave a qiyas. Fi mawridin nas. I'm a fi mawtin in nas. At a time when the nas is being provided. Ida jaa nahrullahi jaa nah. Ida jaa nahrullahi batala nahru miracle. If the ocean, yeah. the miracle was a man who had a little well. Had a little well. He used to charge the people. He used to put the bucket in there for them. Get the water out. And he would give the water to the people. And he would charge them. Say, give me money. Mm. Maybe because he, little put a, he put a little a motor, an engine there to get the water out. Okay, so he charges the people. He's allowed to do that, right? So one day Allah sends down a rain. The rain, it gushes and everybody's now got water. Are they going to come to the water of uh, no, there's miracle? No need. There's no need. There's no need. Allah's river is there, right? Yes. Allah's had the hadith of the Prophet is here now. The call of Imam Abu Hanifa now is gone. Finished. Abu Hanifa came back. This okay. is how we, we look at their discussion. Okay. Abu Hanifa came and said, hadith is life. Okay. We're yeah. going to be like to the party, sorry, Abu Hanif is right. You guys are without nothing. And he's without nothing. No, he hasn't got nothing. He's got Qiyas. He's got, he's got nothing. The Qiyas is not, because they brought Hadith. No, he, but he said the word Hadith. Oh, sorry. We're still at the stage where they've got Hadith. Hey, I'm sorry, I thought he said, I oh, thought he uh, came back and said Hadith is weak. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Hadith falls away. So Abu Hanif has got Qiyas, right? Yeah, which is better than nothing. Which yeah, is so now they brought, so he weakened the Hadith. So yeah. Abu Hanif now has got something. Hadha, he's yeah. got Qiyas. So he's now stronger. He's okay. on the upper hand. They come back and they said, okay, we've got an ayah from the Quran. Abu Hanif was half of the Quran. Half of the Quran, but not necessarily the Istimbat. Oh, come on. Are you telling me that every single ayah in the Quran, and Imam Shafi'i was asked, where's the ijma' in the Quran? He went home, half of the Bikitabillah. He okay. scratched his head and went back and finished the Quran three times. Okay, what's Let the Let me finish. And then he came to the ayah, وَمَنْ يُشَاخِغِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَبَعِ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَانَّ مَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا He got the ijma' from the ayah, Imam Shafi'i. Why couldn't he see it in the first time when he read it? The second time he couldn't even see it. The third time Shafi'i saw that this ayah is a delil for ijma. Not only just that, not only just that. Is, is Abu Hanifa more ahfad than uh, Uthman Ma'afan? No, he's not. Uthman radhi, Uthman radhi al anhu at his time, Abdul, Ibn Abdul Bar mentions in his Kitab al-Timheed, a woman, a woman gave birth at six months. She gave birth to a child at six months. Hmm. Ali sent a, and the father, the man who married her, the man who, after six months of being married to her, she gave birth. Right. He said, how is our marriage only been for six months? <laughs> You're giving birth. You got this child from somewhere else. It's wedlock. This is not my child. And he brought her to the court and they looked into her situation and it became a problem. Ali ibn Abi Talib sent a letter to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala He said, Uthman, Sometimes it's been transmitted as Umar, but this was authentically Uthman. Okay. He sent a letter to Uthman. He said, Uthman, this woman is right. She can give birth in six months. Hey, where? In the Quran. Where? Uthman is hafil. He's the one who compiled the Quran with his qiraat and everything, his ahruf and everything. Hmm. How? He said the ayah, وَالْقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَوَصَيْنَ الْإِسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتُ كُرْهًا وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرًا حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ شُدَّ وَبَلَغَ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً إلى آخر الآية Allah says وَحَمْلُهُ وَفِصَالُهُ ثَلَاثُونَ شَهْرًا The pregnancy and the breastfeeding 30 months Subtract 24 months from it, which is two years of the breastfeeding. As Allah said, yeah, You get six left. We're only left to six months, right? Yeah. That six months is called Dalalatul Iqtida. It's a way of extracting evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah. It's okay. called Dalalatul Iqtida. Okay. Why did Uthman could not see that? Okay. What I'm trying to say to you is that no. I remember before I said, "May Yuridi Allahu bi khairan yufaqihu fi din." Yeah. Inna ma ana qasimun, wallahu yu'ati. 
The Prophet sallallahu said, anyone who Allah wants khair for them, he gives them the fiqh of the religion. Wallahu, Allahu azza wa jalla is what? The Prophet said, Inna ana qasimun. I, dis- I, dis- I distribute the knowledge. Wallahu yu'ti some. Allah gives each one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The scholars, they said, the knowledge is for the people the way that risk is written for them. Okay. So it could happen that Imam okay. Hanifa can't see I it. I still want to follow this through then. So, so now we will. The so now we have a situation. So Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, he got responded to with an evidence from the Quran. Okay, which is? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Baqarah, he mentions the story of Ma'akar ibn Yasar al Muzani. Um, Allah says, وَإِذَا طَلَّقْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَبَلَغْنَا أَجَلَهُنَّ فَلَا تَعْضُرُوهُنَّ أَنْ يَنْكِحْنَا أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ إِذَا تَرَاضَوا بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ This ayah came down on Ma'akar ibn Yasar al Muzani. Ma'akar had a sister. Hmm. He married his sister off to a man. Pay attention to this. Uh, to a man, his sister. He married his sister off to a man. And the man divorced her in a very despicable way, abhorrent way. He didn't like it, the way he treated his sister. So what happened was, the idda finished. Because The woman's timing finished. Her idda finished. He had, he had three cycles, whether it be mahayid or tuhrin, we're not going to strengthen which opinion is which. He could have taken her back. He had a chance, he had a window of taking her back. He didn't. He let that time fly by. Then what happened was, the men found out Ma'akal ibn Yasari's sister is available, she's looking to get married. And then he went into the line and said, I'm back. Of course, she loves her ex-husband. She prefers him over any other man. Her heart it was for him. Mm-hmm. She wants him. So she said to her brother, Ma'akal, my ex-husband is back. I want him. He said, Wallahi, I'm not going to marry you off to him. Mm-hmm. Abadan, the man who treated you the way he treated you. And the, he acted the way you acted. Now that he's found out that um, other men are coming to you, Ha, he wants to come into the, uh, he had opportunity. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said in the ayah, when if you divorce the women and their idda finishes, فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ أَنْ يَنْكِحْنَ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ Do not prevent them from, فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ Don't prevent these women that are under your guardianship to marry. Why is Allah telling Ma'akal ibn Nisar don't prevent them? She could just go and get married herself. Okay, where the sabab ibn Nisul, how does it reach us? How did the reason for revelation reach us? There's, there's, it's authenticity. How, but what if he knew about it and he just didn't believe in authenticity? But the ayah, forget the sabab ibn Nisul. Hatta forget the sabab ibn Nisul. Okay, what is The ayah leave the, says, leave the reason for Allah says, فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ Guardians, don't prevent the women from getting married. Jamil, which shows that they should be able to get married themselves without a no, wedding. No, no, it's saying, the Guardians don't, don't prevent the women from getting married. Don't, yani, a man comes up for her. No, no, that's the subject. We said we'll leave that. The ayah didn't say for her to marry themselves off. It didn't say that. It says, don't prevent guardians. You, well, he's don't prevent them. Don't إذا prevent تراضوا بينه بينه بالمعروف. Okay. If the women, the ayah is clear. The ayah says, if the women, but this is my point. This ayah is clearly saying, if the woman wants to go and marry a man, don't stop her marrying this man. Why would okay look? That's on his side, not on this. Okay, okay, don't stop them. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's say that's even his advantage. Yeah. Why would Allah talk to the men when the woman could just go and get married? Why did she even need his consent, Aslan? Hey, because maybe at that time people believe that the woman can't get married because they have this hadith which is daif. Which they have this, this hadith that Abu Hanifa says is weak. Yeah. So the men were preventing, and Allah is saying, "Don't prevent them." Two Let things. Them be two free. things. Two things. For example, I'm just giving two things. Example. Two things. The ayah is talking to the men who are guardians over the girl. Okay. And it's telling the girls It's telling the men The, the men, the guardians Yeah, it's telling the guardians Don't, don't stop marrying them off To the men that they want of their choice That's what the eyes is Don't prevent the women From marrying yes. them off To the men that they Yes That they think is fit for them Okay I, You have no control over this Let her do her own No, marriage. don't marry them off I Sorry, don't stop marrying them off That's what it's talking to the guardian <laughs> Confuse me as well, go on That's, the What's ayah, the ayah saying? The ayah is saying, yani, oh guardians, yeah. if this sister brings a brother she likes, yeah. she wants this man. No, okay, well you're adding stuff into the ayah because the ayah doesn't say brother she likes. And no, no, I'm explaining Stick to, to the ayah, please. The ayah says, Fala mm. Do not, oh guardians, do not stop them. Fala do not stop them. To marry them off to the men. Yeah. To marry them off to the men. So yeah. marrying her off is by the guardian. 
That's Allah what the ayah said. Don't stop. As in, you have no control over. Uh, Habib, do you understand why? Abu Hanifa, these masa- be- do you understand why these can get a bit complex? No, it can't. The fact that we're talking no, about it, it for the last fifteen minutes shows. No, but, yes, yes. <laughs> huh? No, what I'm saying. I, my point is, I can. Uh, I, there's people who would argue right now, even if you if this podcast is happening, and they can make a two hours discussion over it. It doesn't give it a valid argument. But do you what I'm trying to say to you is that you're right. There are always going to be people who argue. There are always people who are going to be stubborn and hard headed. They're always going to try to prove their point. My point is Al Imam Abu Hanifa here with insaf, with justice, with fairness, he doesn't have argument to stand on. His issue is no evidences for it. It's just what? A, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, an issue of, uh, it's an issue of um, uh, qiyas, qiyas yeah. that he used. And these ulama, who are more than him in number, more knowledgeable. Mean anything. Yeah, more, 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 more. It doesn't necessarily by itself. It doesn't. But okay. when it adds on to other things, second thing is they're minhu bil hadith. They're more knowledgeable than him in hadith. Who authenticated it? And Imam Abu Hanifa, to be honest, in the concept of hadith, he's weak. Aslan. Nobody weak in hadith. Out of the people who are strong in hadith, nobody weak. In no, I'm saying to you, take the hadith Sahih or Daif. Yeah. But what we have is that we have. I, I mean, there's few ever, uh, few other evidences I can bring you, but the. Discussion that we're going to have here is that Al Imam Abu Hanifa is standing on Qiyas. These scholars are standing on an ayah from the Quran. Depending this, on how you interpret it. Not interpret it. Okay, give me another interpretation of that. Okay, I, I gave you. And one. give me where you got that interpretation. <laughs> okay, good I question. Know. Okay. I, will, my, I brought you the Sabab al that came down, which is Sahih. Which could. Okay, this is my argument. This is my position. This is my position. You present your position. This is my position now. Okay. And all of these Masail. These imams, these great noble imams who you respect and you love and you honor. No, there are, Sh- Shahid, you're confusing two things. I don't want you to confuse two Go things. On. There are issues, with the way you're presenting the argument, I would say, yes, you're right. Yeah. It's not fair to push Abu Hanifa, the, يعني, يعني Abu Hanifa rahimah, in this issue, he's got his point. Mm. Allah mabarik, and I can see where he's, why he, got, he has his opinion. And I respect the other party. And he's a Hanafi and I wouldn't make a big issue about it. Like putting your hand under your shor- under your, your navel or whatever. I'm fine with all of that. I have no issue with it. The issue of moving your finger in the salah. They don't believe it's permissible yeah. and others believe it's permissible. I won't make a big hoo-ha about it because it's an issue that the difference here is valid. Yeah. What I'm saying... Like in here, dalilun ghayru dalil. What I'm saying is every single mas'ala, we're not talking about the mas'ala that you just mentioned, right. every single issue. My argument is that these... Great noble imams, they didn't just make up their verdicts based on their own desires, which I'm sure you would even say that they didn't do this. Agreed? No, can I, can I, can I answer that point? Of course you can. Every scholar gave a verdict on a dalil he has. Okay. And some issues they didn't have evidences. Okay. And they gave their verdict on a lower graded ruling. So they based it on a what? Yeah. Qiyas, for example, because the evidence didn't reach them. Or let me finish. It, okay, go on. So in this situation for Imam Abu Hanifa, he looked for an ayah, couldn't see anything from the ayat. It didn't seem like that to him. Hadith, it didn't come across an, a narration for it. What did he now do? He gave the third option. He gave Qiyas. At this moment, he's the upper hand. Fine, we're with him. Then a delil came from someone who has it. They brought it to the table. Where if Abu Hanifa was to get it, this is the point I'm trying to say. If he was to get it, he wouldn't argue like the way you're How trying. How do you know he didn't get it, but he just didn't believe it was Because authentic. all of them has been transmitted from them. They said, Ida sahal hadithu fawa madhabi. If they, they, how many issues did they came back, come back from? Hmm. They themselves, if they hmm. were, everything that they said was based on all of the evidences. Why did they do taraju? Why did Ahmed turn away from some issues? Why did Shafi'i have a madhab al-qadim and madhab al-jadid? Why, why? Okay, my, my, my question goes back to, if this imam, which you believe that would not make verdicts based on his desires, can we at least agree on that? He wouldn't make rulings based on his desires. But he will make it based on his ijtihad. Agreed. Not a delil. I agree with you. Not on a delil. Okay, I agree. No problem. Okay. Let's go back to the Battle of Ahzab. The companions made their decision based on their ijtihad. Okay. Some of them prayed later after the time of Asr. Some of them prayed at the time of Asr. They went back to the Prophet They wanted to get a verdict. Which one of us was right? Which one of us was wrong? What did he say to them? He didn't say both of you are right. Did he say you are wrong? He, but I'm saying the Prophet didn't say both of you why are right. Why didn't, if the truth is haq, if the truth is wahid, one, I, why didn't he say you are wrong uh, and you are right? Like you're saying now, because you you're know, saying something you know why? Never, okay, let me answer your question. Let me answer your question. The reason why he said that he was that he was teaching us something. The people are going to come later. That there are evidences that are going to be like that where we have to respect each other in the way that we deal with each other on this issue. So there are going to be texts. When we read it, this person is going to understand it like that. And this person is going to understand it like that. And that this is called an ijtihad and that we need to respect one another. 
But in no way, shape or form In that hadith that you brought Did the Prophet ﷺ say Both opinions that are yani, On two different yani, spectrums Both of them are right No, he didn't say that But why if there's a clear ayah from the Quran That tells you you have to pray on time You're saying if you have a delay Which is a ayah from the Quran no, no, forget, It takes precedence over yeah, everything yeah, forget, forget, It takes precedence over no, your no, forget, forget the issue of Yani ayah, you're bringing something external. Put that aside for me. They have a statement from the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Mm. They all just looked at that hadith. One, one of the groups restricted himself to the wording, and another one he done, he looked at the overall meaning, the wisdom behind why the Prophet said it. This is exactly what the madahibs are like. Mm. And I said that to you beginning, at the beginning. And therefore they can all be right because he never said you were no, wrong. No, I'm not. That's why I said to you, both parties who went to the Battle of Ahzab with the Prophet said to Banu Quray that I told you both of them are not right. But he, if they were both not right, he would have said you were wrong, and he would have no. taught us a lesson, and the lesson would have been greater that for the fact Actually, that the truth is one. Uh, again, that's my point. I, I, I this, this is a long time ago since I looked at it, when I looked at this discussion of the Hadith of Banu Qurayza and what the yeah. scholars. Just, I can't really put my finger on it now, but there was qara'in, qara'in, yani indications mm. that alluded that the party that was. Seeing it as the Prophet saying hasten were right. There were external narrations that indicated that that was right. It would have been nice if he, if you, to prove your point, it would be nice if he said, You guys were right, you guys wrong. And I could have no response to you. But the fact that he didn't shows that I've got a, no, but an argument on my side. That there are every issue in Islam. Both parties Islam. can be right. What's your evidence for that? The, the hadith of the Hazab. The, the hadith of the Hazab, the Prophet didn't say both parties are right. Okay, but he didn't say. He just didn't blame both parties. Okay. And I'm saying to you, that's true. We can't blame. The issue of niqab, one party could not blame the other party. They sitched he had. You're right. That's all that that hadith shows. That there's sinning is not on any party here. There's no one leaving with a sin. Hmm. Okay. But the truth is one. 